Hello and welcome back to another video of the historical background of Company of Heroes 2. In this video I'm not going to play the game. I'm going to talk about the different units and I'll uh, talk about some specifics from the units themselves and I will uh, look at what they can do in game and also what they did in real life. So you will be able to see uh, if it's uh, realistic uh, what this unit is doing in game or if it's all just fantasy. Um, let's start with uh, the light vehicle over here. It's the uh, WC 54 3 quarters ton ambulance. The function of the ambulance is pretty obvious it's uh, to heal soldiers and in real life the WC-54 was used to transport wounded soldiers from the battlefield of course um, actually this uh, vehicle was uh, um, produced by the Dodge factories in uh, the United States and uh, WC is a uh, pretty weird abbreviation because usually the abbreviations mean something quite logical but th uh, this WC abbreviation is not uh, what it may seem. Um, the W stands for the production, production year which is 1941. Yeah, you wouldn't have guessed that now would you? And the C is the rating of the vehicle category. So uh, half-ton vehicles would be uh, uh, would be called C vehicles. So half-ton vehicles from 1941 would be WC. But you paid attention, so you saw that this is not a half-ton vehicle, but uh, the uh, WC model code was retained for both the three-quarter ton and the uh, one and a half ton six by six dodges. So they actually liked this abbreviation, I guess. Um, so the um, uh, WC-54 is a is an ambulance. It's quite realistic, and the uh, the name is also correct in game. So that's quite um, quite uh, well. I said well, realistic. So okay, uh, the next. I'm going to do the American vehicles today, as you might have guessed by now. And um, the United States forces have a lot of vehicles which are sort of uh, family. And uh, the Dodge uh, also has two members Boys, of this family in game. Here's the WC-51. The WC-51 is a military truck. Uh, if you, uh, uh, Most players call this the Jeep. But uh, this is actually not really a jeep because the the uh, jeep is a general purpose vehicle. That's why it's called jeep. General purpose abbreviates as GP, so that became became jeep. And this is a uh, Dodge vehicle uh, with uh, with or without a 50 cal heavy machine gun available in game. Um, the uh, WC-51, uh, as you know right now, it's also produced in 1941 and uh, its function is to suppress early on uh, or kill enemy infantry. It's a uh, scouting purpose as well. Um, but the real uh, scouting uh, will be done by a different vehicle, uh, which we will go and visit right now. Is this is the M8 Greyhound and M8 if you have seen the, the video that I made about the weapons the infantry and uh, uh, M stands for model uh, so this is a model 8 armored car uh, in uh, 1941 the United States wanted to have a light and fast uh, tank hunter vehicle uh, but in 1941 the tanks were quite different than uh, what they were from uh, later in the war. So uh, at first the uh, tank hunter was made of, uh, it was actually, a, a, a they took a scout car and just altered it uh, so it became some kind of a 
uh, tank hunter. Uh, they also uh, produced half tracks with big anti tank guns. Uh, they were used in North Africa. Um, but uh, since the tanks became uh, a lot uh, heavy, uh, lot uh, armed, a lo armored a lot heavier, the um, um, the United States Army decided that it was not so uh, very um, important that the gun would be very big, but that the vehicle would be very fast. So uh, the gun on the on the Greyhound is uh, not a very big one. It's the 37 mil, and uh, that is not capable of uh, damaging any tanks. You can see it's an armored car by the fact that this ha it had wheels. Um, the personnel inside the car was pretty vulnerable to mines, so the bottom plate was reinforced later, uh, so that if it would drive over a mine, then uh, the uh, crew would uh, have a bigger chance to survive. Um, this was produced from uh, 1943 on, and uh, they built about uh, eight and a half thousand of these vehicles. Uh, in game it can be upgraded with a 50 cal, as you can see right here. And the 50 cal, I've been talking about that earlier, it's an air-cooled heavy machine gun, uh, which uh, could uh, damage planes and light vehicles. So it can support the, uh, the scouting purposes uh, of the M8 when it encounters the front units of, an enemy, uh, of enemy troops. Um, you can also see that it has some kind of a skirt here to the side and that's anti-Panzerfaust. So uh, the Panzerfaust uh, would maybe bounce off. Uh, that didn't really happen very often uh, because this is a, a not a very thick plated armored vehicle. Um, because the 37mm uh, didn't really have a purpose for uh, many uh, encounters with tanks. The um, other uh, a new variant was uh, made uh, which is this one, the M20. The M20 is actually a M8 Greyhound with the turret taken off and then replaced by a ring with a 50 cal on it. The ring uh, is um, uh, making it possible for the machine gunner to turn all around 360 degrees and fire at every target which he can see. Um, this one uh, can also be upgraded with armored skirts like the M8, so if we do that you can see that uh, the skirts appear over here and now this M20 is also um, a bit more protected against Panzerfausts. And this one can lay mines and that's uh, actually realistic because the M20 uh, was was um, also a uh, it was a scouting vehicle, of course, but it was also a support vehicle, which had uh, room for hand grenades, munition, uh, ammunition, and anti-tank mines. So the fact that this one can lay mines is actually quite realistic. Um, so the M20 is uh, actually a, a build. Uh, a variant of the M8 Greyhound. The name Greyhound was uh, used more by the British um, because the British like to uh, name their vehicles a lot more poetic names than usually than the uh, Americans. The Americans were just talking about the armored car or the M8. Um, so let's move on to the half tracks. Um we start with this one. Yeah, this is the M3 half track. And uh, the half tracks uh, are also a big family. And the M3 half track is a ar armored personnel carrier. And uh, you can see that the, uh, it has front wheels and tracked backside. Um, in a different video I talked about the Wehrmacht vehicles, the Ostheer half track, which was actually a three-quarter track. And if you remember that, uh, you can see the difference now, because this one is actually only a half track, because only 50% of the 
of the length of the vehicle is supported by tracks. Um, the half track uh, was a very numerous vehicle. Uh, about um, 15,000 of these were built and there were also many many variants and if we include those then the grand total comes uh, between 50 and 55,000 produced which is a, a whole lot of course so um, the M3 half track was uh, a, a very um, a very versatile vehicle you can see that it also sports a 50 cal heavy machine gun with the ring and um, it could uh, hold up uh, a lot of uh, a lot of troops here in game it can carry two squads uh, which means between eight and ten guys in the in the half track um, and uh, that's well that's all a bit uh, realistic uh, in reality you could cramp in a bit more if you would like uh, especially if the soldiers uh, soldiers weren't too big uh, personally um, sometimes this uh, uh, this uh, half track uh, was uh, altered by uh, in the field but um, uh, because it could be mass produced and uh, most uh, half tracks were uh, uh, looking pretty much the same um, the half tracks were uh, not very popular because uh, you could die easily in them because they were open topped there was no uh, there was no cover against air attack or uh, airburst artillery shells and uh, machine guns could fire through the vehicle so uh, at first they were called purple heart boxes by uh, and, um, by the soldiers that were uh, in the units that were using these vehicles um, uh, so uh, this one was uh, having a lot of variants and some of these variants we can see uh, right here Ready. Send orders. here's the M21 so uh, as you might remember M stands for model and uh, this is the M21 so uh, you can see how many variants uh, have been made uh, by the M uh, of the M3 half track the um, uh, M21 has a M1 81 millimeter mortar uh, carrier and it could carry 97 rounds and uh, there were not built many of those it was a pretty rare vehicle over a hundred were made but they didn't see uh, a lot of surface so uh, the M21 was uh, not the most common uh, vehicle in uh, the United States Army it was just like the M3 it was uh, produced by the White Motor Company and uh, over a hundred uh, were made about 110 which is not very uh, very much of course and uh, they were serving in uh, the Western Front uh, because they were only produced from 1944 onwards okay um so uh, let's uh, attack a target with this one Fire at will. Boys, you ready to roll out? so you can see that the, the crew is just uh, operating the M1 mortar like they were on the ground uh, of course this vehicle had to be stationary to be successful in using this mortar Okay, uh, the next member of the family is the M15A1AA half track, and uh, this one uh, is, of course, AA means anti air. It has a 37 mm uh, auto cannon, and uh, they were also uh, it. The 37 mm got supported by two uh, 50 cal HMGs, which you can see here. Uh, later the United States Army were would also make uh, HMG carriers with uh, four uh, machine guns mounted and uh, these you can see in Company of Heroes 2 as well but not in the United States Army 
but in the Soviet army because it was a land lease uh, vehicle. The M15 was uh, actually called the M15 combination gun motor carriage, the MCGMC, and MCGMC is also the name for the one with the four uh, HMGs equipped. And uh, because the uh, Americans wanted some uh, anti-air vehicles, uh, because in the first half of the conflict they didn't have any air superiority yet so uh, they wanted uh, some more anti-air uh, equipment so they had this one produced from uh, mid 1942 uh, onwards and uh, a total number uh, built was over 2000 uh, which means that this was a lot more common than the uh, motor half track uh, in game this is mostly used against uh, infantry and you can see that it sets up and then fire. it will fire at the infantry like this and it's quite uh, deadly Cease action. you can see that uh, the loader loads uh, um, a bunch of shells um, this is uh, pretty common for uh, anti-aircraft guns that they have these um, sort of clips with uh, the shells for the anti-air gun um okay so this brings us to the next half track which is a m5 and the m5 oh wow i didn't know that but the m5 actually has the meat chopper the 450 the gun uh, upgrade which is uh, visible over here um and now it becomes an m16 half track um so let's just put an m5 next to it because I wanted to say something about that one first. The M5. Here goes. Secure the ammo so we can get out of here. The M5 was a half track which was produced in the United States uh, but only for but not used by the army itself. It was purely meant for uh, uh, land lease purposes. So it was uh, land leased to uh, mostly to the Soviet Union. Uh, which then used it in uh, the battle against the, uh, the Germans on the Eastern Front. Um, so uh, the M5, uh, which you can use in uh, Company of Heroes 2, is a bit unrealistic in the fact that you can use it as the United States Army, and in reality the United States Army did not use it at all. Um, so if uh, you upgrade it with the uh, uh, MCGMC then you get the M16 and the M16 is a uh, does have this uh, quad mount of course Boys, and it's a very deadly uh, thing to encounter because uh, those four HMGs will fire not simultaneously but alternatively uh, alternating I mean and uh, that means that uh, they uh, won't overheat too fast and um, they have uh, they have a lot of firepower which uh, can uh, can down a plane of course is that's what it's uh, designed for but it can also shred infantry very easily um, Okay, this uh, concludes the part of the video which is about light vehicles and if you take a quick look at the different half tracks you can see pretty easily that they ha are family of course. Okay, let's move on to the totally tracked vehicles. Um, they are called tanks but Send not all orders. tracked vehicles are tanks in the literal sense of the word. So we start with the M5A1 Stuart. It's a light tank and light tanks are uh, usually uh, produced in the beginning of the war and the Stuart is no uh, exception. The uh, Stuart started out as the M3 Stuart and uh, the funny thing is that um, uh, I was talking about the British naming their vehicles 
and uh, this is also a, a British name, Stuart, because in uh, the United States they were just talking about the light tank or the M3 and uh, not about the um, uh, Stuart. Stuart was uh, a, a Civil War uh, Confederate general and uh, the British uh, they used these names uh, as they had given names to other Civil War generals uh, uh, from other Civil War generals before to for example the M3 Lee and also uh, to the, the Grant uh, which both uh, saw service in North Africa. The Grant was mostly used by the British and the Lee was used by the Americans mostly. Um, so, the, um, the M3 Stuart was also uh, uh, used in North Africa by the British mostly, uh, but um, the M5 was uh, an, an upgunned and up-armored uh, version and uh, well not really the differences were actually quite small um, it was a 37 mil uh, gun like the M8 Greyhound uh, that we have seen before and um, actually the differences between the M3 and the M5 were so small that uh, when they were offered in a land lease program to the Soviet Union they uh, refused because they thought this tank was not up to par with the German tanks that they had to fight. And actually the Soviets had a point there because uh, the Stuarts were the first American crew tanks in World War II to fight against enemy tanks in a real uh, battle. But it was... Um, it was. It could not penetrate any German armor from 1942 onwards. So uh, the uh, the British, for example, uh, they would uh, take the turrets off the uh, Stuarts and then use them as uh, scout vehicles, the so-called um, Stuart recce vehicles from uh, recce from recall. Um, the Stuarts uh, were uh, quite numerous. Uh, they uh, built almost 23,000 of both variants. Uh, but in 1944 they stopped making them because it was uh, not useful in uh, combat anymore. Um, so, the, the yeah, this concludes our uh, part about the Stuart. And, um, the next vehicle that we're going to discuss is uh, uh, some sort of a howitzer. And the howitzer uh, is a gun w which doesn't have a flat trajectory. All right, fellas. It's Final this uh, thing. It's the M8A1 howitzer motor carriage. Um, oh, I forgot one thing about the steward. And the uh, next steward... Uh, the first one was the M3 and the next one was the M5 and that was on purpose. Of course the next one should have been the M4 but because the Shermans, the most widely used Shermans were uh, the M4 uh, that would mean a very confusing situation if somebody would call for an M4 because then they might get stewards when they were expecting Shermans and that would be kind of troublesome in certain situations of course. Okay, Square on to the M8 now. Lock down the shells. This is the M8A1 Howitzer motor carriage. And uh, this one is... Uh, uh, this one also got a, a different name. But the funny thing about this one is that it didn't get the name from the British Army, which uh, was giving out most of these names. But this one was uh, uh, invented by the Ordnance Department. And... Uh, they uh, gave the M8 the name of a General Scott. So this one is um, this one is called uh, the Scott in uh, some s uh, circles, at least. Um, the Scott can fire a barrage mil like this, and it's um, firing 75 millimeter shells, and uh, that's Stop enough, boys. Doing. And uh, the uh, Scott was um, not very widely used uh, vehicle. 
uh, and that's uh, mainly because they uh, they uh, almost built 2,000 of these, a little less of them, and that means that they were not very widely spread. They also uh, were uh, not produced after 1944 anymore, um, but it was a, a very nice support vehicle, um, which was actually very good at uh, attacking uh, fortifications from a distance. Um, the 75mm howitzer motor carriage was uh, uh, in battle uh, mostly in the Italian campaign and also on the Western Front and in the Pacific and um, especially in the Pacific these small tanks like the Stuart and the M8 were very successful because the Japanese only had very lightly armored tanks uh, whereas the Germans of course had a, a very big uh, arsenal of heavily armored tanks which made these tanks uh, less useful on uh, the Western Front. Then there, was, there was also a, a plan of making this uh, into a lightweight tank destroyer and um, uh, they were developing it into a, uh, a small tank destroyer but uh, when the M18 Hellcat was uh, produced they uh, stopped the production of, uh, of the M8 tank destroyer version. So, on to the most famous one of all, the up. Sherman. Here we can see the Sherman, and the Sherman is the workhorse of the United States Armored Forces. Uh, the Shermans were the most numerous built uh, tanks in World War II, uh, reaching up to almost 50,000 produced, which is uh, a whole lot of course. And uh, what you can see here is the Sherman M4A3, and uh, as you might have uh, remembered, the A stands for alteration and um, the uh, M4 was the M4 tank, so uh, it came after the M3 Stuart uh, was the M4 tank and um, when they were uh, being produced uh, they were uh, pretty powerful at first. They were uh, sent to North Africa, they were land leased to the British and um, and they were uh, uh, used in the battle at El Alamein and uh, there the Shermans, they were called the Sherman II and the Sherman II was a very powerful tank against the uh, at that time not so heavily armed uh, German uh, opponents. So the Sherman was very successful in North Africa, it had a dual purpose barrel and the funny thing is that it also has a dual, dual purpose barrel in game. You can, uh, uh, you can load AP shells with it and uh, then it can shoot tanks and you can change load HE. Keep it coming. and then it's loading high explosives and uh, let's see what the difference is. Uh, let's first shoot load AP. Gunner scan and identify. Let's first shoot with the AP shell. Okay, that up. was good. Here. And now let's load an HE shell. Clear firing. And that's a Stop bigger explosion as you can see. Uh, AP was uh, meant to uh, take out other tanks. And HE was uh, meant to uh, destroy bunkers um, kill uh, blobs of infantry um, and uh, break through uh, fortifications or roadblocks or stuff like that. Um, the Sherman in-game can be upgraded with a 50 cal and it has the same purpose as on the other tanks. Anti-air purpose, uh, you can also use it a bit for uh, the, um, better vision because the vision inside the Sherman is not very um, comfortable uh, there's small vision slits and there's coaxial machine gun here and um, the Sherman itself was uh, sometimes called the Tommy Cooker 
and that was because they could catch fire easily uh, because the fuel storage was on the sides uh, in these parts so when uh, an AT gun would penetrate the armor then it would set the fuel on fire um, uh, the uh, we can uh, show Ready. this by killing this unit for now. Okay. Um, you can see the big fire uh, burning right now. Uh, the huge fireballs that you saw are not very realistic, but that this was a very flammable tank is something that a lot of people knew and uh, therefore uh, the later Shermans they were fit with uh, uh, water uh, water coolage and onto the sides uh, on the inside of the armor uh, and they were protecting the fuel storage so there were some sort of bags of water laying next to the fuel lines so that if the armor would be penetrated then it would not hurt the um, then it would not hurt the, uh, the the fuel line so much. Okay, so that's the uh, regular Sherman that we just talked about. And uh, then we go, to, go to the Easy 8, which is over here. And the Easy 8 is paired Central with orders. this one, the 76 Sherman M4A3. As you can see, they are both Looks called like M4A3. But this is the uh, M4A3 E8. And because it's E8, it's also known as the uh, EZ8. Uh, because uh, in the uh, American military uh, alphabet, the E stands for easy, like uh, and B is for Bravo and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so. Uh, the Sherman uh, looks almost the same as the Sherman that we saw before uh, but the turret is up armored and the gun is also a 76 millimeter gun um, instead of a 75 it has a longer barrel and it has a muzzle brake in front as you can see here and uh, the difference between the Easy 8 and the 76 Big push coming. Uh, except for the muzzle brake uh, is the suspension because the, uh, there's a vertic vertical and horizontal uh, suspension and uh, this one has horizontal uh, suspension which means that um, which means that they uh, uh, can uh, have a lot more comfort in the tank itself while driving over rough terrain and also it can fire more accurately while on the move and this last thing was of course the most important uh, uh, property of uh, these tanks. So, the EZ-8 uh, is uh, a popular tank w uh, uh, among the troops uh, because of the very nice uh, suspension of course and uh, HVSS for just to be complete means horizontal volute spring suspension. Um, can be upgraded with a 50 cal again and Ready. same goes for this one and uh, you might see a lot of similarities which means that uh, which is because of the Sherman uh, not being a different model it's all the model M4 and uh, model uh, 4 means that all parts are interchangeable so a lot of uh, a lot of uh, broken down Shermans could be repaired by other crews and they could switch out uh, parts they could also uh, um, make field uh, reparations more easily um, and uh, it could be mass produced much more easily than uh, the German tanks where whereas the Germans were going for bigger and better and more armor and bigger guns all the time uh, the Shermans uh, just did slight alterations. The differences between the Shermans are um, not minimal, but if you see a bunch of Germans driving around, uh, you could easily see they are all Shermans. 
Well, if you see a Panzer III, a Panzer IV, a Panzer V and a Panzer VI, these tanks look almost totally different from each other. And uh, this is, some people um, uh, say that this is the, uh, the reason that the Americans beat, it, beat the Germans. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but uh, what is the case is that uh, the Shermans were may, may not have been the strongest tanks, but they were with so many that uh, it was almost unbeatable in uh, sheer numbers. So um, the Americans just uh, brought uh, so much to bear with the numbers of Shermans that it was almost impossible to fight against for uh, the Germans. Um, so, um, Sherman, uh, of course, also named after a, uh, uh, a, um, uh, a Civil War general, uh, William Tecumseh uh, Sherman. And um, this means that the uh, after the Stuart, also the Sherman uh, got its name uh, from a Civil War general from American history. Um, okay, well, uh, on to the Armor next here. Sherman, which is over here. Uh, this Sherman has two properties which are quite uh, common, well, not quite common, but they were both uh, being seen in the Western Front in uh, Europe in date war. 1944-1945 and uh, the first thing that you can see immediately is the dozer. Um, it's a bulldozer tank but um, uh, why is this vehicle in uh, the war? Well, um, when you are uh, fighting a war uh, there will be artillery blasts. There will be uh, there will be vehicles uh, which are taken out by the enemy. They, uh, the wrecks will block the road. And uh, there will be big craters which you can't drive through easily. And there will be debris, rubble. Uh, so it, that needs to be uh, moved away. So uh, what is uh, this dozer being used for? Simply as a, a normal bulldozer. Why aren't the armies using normal bulldozers then, you ask? Well, uh, that's because normal bulldozers had the driver sitting in the open, uh, which is means he is very vulnerable. Uh, so the driver could be killed easily, and then the bulldozer would stand there in the line of fire of the enemy, and not being able to complete his work. Uh, that's all drawbacks. Uh, which the US Army sought to solve by producing this uh, dozer. Uh, the dozer is uh, uh, being put on various uh, types of tanks uh, and then I mean not different uh, models but I mean uh, different uh, variations and um, usually they were just uh, put on the normal M4 so whereas a dozer on a Sherman is realistic, it's not very realistic that this dozer is being fit onto a 105 millimeter uh, uh, Sherman. Um, I'll talk about the 105 millimeter uh, in a bit. The dozers were uh, being used on uh, the beach landings in D-Day, on D-Day in Normandy. Um, and as you might know, uh, Omaha Beach was the uh, was the section of the beach uh, where the Allies had the most trouble breaking through. This was partially because the bombings had been uh, less successful in the Omaha sector, so most uh, fortifications were still intact. But also because uh, the uh, the landings had uh, uh, trouble um, putting down the tanks that were used uh, uh, that were to be used as support uh, on the beaches. Um, there were uh, 16 dozer tanks planned uh, for the landing on Omaha Beach, uh, but 10 were uh, at the bottom of the sea, and only one of the remaining six 
um, no, uh, of the remaining six, one came at the beach, but it had lost the, the blade, the M1 blade. So uh, it couldn't bulldozer anymore. So out of 16, only five were capable of doing any bulldozering at Omaha Beach. Um, the uh, M1 dozer blade was usually put on Shermans with the vertical volute spring suspension and um, later they uh, they did a different version the M1A1 dozer blade which also could be put on the horizontal volute spring suspension um, the thing with the dozer blade was that it was not also all, uh, it was not just useful as uh, putting barricades out of the way but it was also a an extra plate armor plate against enemy fire and uh, this could uh, bounce off uh, shells if they were lucky at least slow them down enough to not penetrate the front armor of the Sherman behind it and uh, when the Americans were fighting in the Bocage country the uh, hedgerow hell uh, they uh, used the um, blades sometimes uh, to break through uh, some of those hedges um, uh, better uh, stuff for the hedges were uh, produced in the form of the rhinoceros scissor blades um, but those are not available in Company of Heroes 2 well onto the 105 uh, millimeter howitzer uh, the 105 millimeter howitzer was uh, produced as a variant of the Sherman uh, so that it could uh, support infantry from uh, a distance and uh, therefore it sacrificed anti-armor capability and um, uh, what's ironic about this in-game is that the dozer was meant for uh, 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 clearing barricades which uh, you need to be in the front and the 105 was uh, meant for artillery support for which you better be in the back so uh, while both uh, things are realistic both the 105 and the blade both together on one tank is not very realistic. And here we can see the other, uh, another example of the uh, uh, HMG equipped on a Sherman. Okay, that brings us to the last Sherman, which is also the rarest one of them all. This last Sherman has a Calliope uh, weapon system on the roof. The weapon system is called T-34 and the name Calliope is derived from a musical instrument which was uh, being um, driven by steam they were uh, uh, you could find them on uh, Mississippi uh, uh, steamboats in the uh, early 20th and late 19th century and, uh, the, um, and, and those were called Calliope so that's what gave the and the artillery weapon is its name. The Calliope is, uh, is just named after a musical instrument because those pipes were resembling the steam organ. Um, the Sherman Calliope uh, was um, uh, not a very popular vehicle. Uh, armored divisions uh, thought that this was not really a tank and they were pretty correct about that because the T-34 had to be in the back just like the, um, uh, the 105 and the M8 for artillery support and uh, if we let it fire for a bit you can see how that looks it's like a bit of firework going on the tubes have uh, rockets in them they can only be fired once so if all uh, Actually, not all rockets have been fired right now because there are many more tubes than shots. But that's for gameplay purposes, of course. Um, but this is a tank, and tanks are uh, to be used in uh, battles against different tanks uh, from the opponent. And that's at least the opinion of most tankers in the United States Army and, uh, I guess, in most other armies as well. So they thought that the T-34 was taking away a tank from its uh, natural task. So um, that's uh, why they were not very popular. They were also really rare. Um, 
a minimum of 13 has been built. Yes, 13. 10 plus 3. And a maximum is not uh, widely known. So if you know how many of these were actually built, please post uh, the number in the comments. Uh, it, it's a really uh, rare vehicle. The Calliope system was also uh, used on different vehicles. Uh, but um, on the Sherman it was a really rare sight uh, which you almost never uh, encountered because there were so uh, few of those. Uh, okay, well this concludes our part about the Shermans and uh, well the Sherman family cozy together in a French field here except for poor M4 and 3 normal. Um, the next vehicle we're going to talk about is this one, the M7B1 Priest. The Priest is a howitzer motor carriage. And you can see that the howitzer is built in the car. And it also has a uh, ring with uh, an HMG on it. Um, M7 means Model 7 of course. And uh, the M7 Priest uh, was um, uh, was built from 1942 until the end of the war. And uh, there were about uh, 826 built of the M7, M7B1, while almost three and a half thousand were built of the M7. Um, the uh, howitzer is a 105 millimeter howitzer. It's a long range artillery barrage and uh, it looks like this when it fires. It's a pretty heavy caliber as you can see. And the uh, shells are in the back compartment. It also has a Browning uh, 50 cal HMG. It has vertical forward spring suspension. The M7 was a uh, land lease to Britain. But uh, for the British it was a problem that the uh, British ammo didn't fit in the gun. So uh, they had to, um, they had to uh, uh, alter the, the, the guns to... Um, they were re-equipped. Uh, uh, they were not used by the British that uh, uh, much more often. And uh, the British just switched to using a uh, uh, comparable vehicle, the co uh, which was called the Sexton. Uh, it was developed by the Canadians. It had an M3 chassis, uh, which was uh, different than this one. This is the M4 chassis from the Shermans that we just talked about. And the Sexton was uh, carrying a uh, quick-firing 25-pounder. Um, Artillery-wise, almost as strong as the Priest. Uh, they were pretty uh, comparable. Uh, the priest arrived in North Africa and uh, uh, it got the name priest because the uh, British already had uh, a self-propelled artillery uh, vehicle which was called the bishop because from a distance it looked a distance it, the turret of the bishop looked like a bishop's mitre <laughs> um, and uh, then they went on with the theme for other self-propelled artillery guns and uh, so this one became the priest. Um, that's actually quite funny if you think about it, that uh, on one hand we have uh, American generals from history, not the names not given by Americans but by Brits, um, and then on the other hand we have religious functions uh, being uh, put on uh, self-propelled artillery guns. The uh, M7B1 variant is uh, uh, fully based on the M4A3 chassis, uh, which means that uh, earlier versions of the Sherman uh, were not used anymore for the B1. Um, 
well that uh, that's actually the story about the priest and um, if we are just moving on to the next vehicle you will see that those are two brothers again Get we start with the M10 M10 uh, you might have noticed M3 Stewart, M4 Sherman, M5 Stewart, uh, M8 Greyhound, M7 Priest, M8 Greyhound, and now we are at the M10 Wolverine uh, Tank Destroyer. Um, the Americans were in need for a tank destroyer. They wanted to have uh, uh, something that could put down uh, German tanks. And they didn't have that yet. They only had the Sherman and the Sherman's AP fire was not um, uh, not good enough to fight against the uh, German uh, armor. So uh, what they did was uh, develop a new doctrine and the doctrine was the uh, uh, doctrine of uh, dedicated tank destroyer units. So uh, to uh, uh, make those units you of course had to um, uh, produce tank destroyers otherwise your units would be empty um, the uh, the goal of tank destroyer units was that they would be in the back uh, the fight would start uh, the front line of the tanks the screening tanks those were usually the light ones the stewards etc these were those were uh, supposed to uh, report the position of uh, enemy tanks and um, then the tank destroyers would move in and they would fire at the, um, uh, the uh, enemy armor. Uh, they had to uh, move in, shoot the tank and get the hell out again because uh, they were not really up armored. They could not take on a tank in a toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe fight. So. Um, the gun was capable of penetrating uh, German army armor, especially from the sides, of course. Um, but the uh, the armor of the vehicle itself was not prepared to uh, receive a lot of enemy fire. So uh, the M10 uh, would move in, fire, and then move out again. Uh, they were not uh, um, uh, meant to uh, used uh, to be used offensively. Uh, they could uh, they could never charge or chase an enemy tank because then the vehicle would probably be lost. So uh, they were used in the hit and run uh, manner that I just described, and also in ambush uh, tactics. Um, you can see that the turret is open topped, which makes the crew vulnerable. Again, like with the half tracks uh, from airburst artillery and. Uh, um, air support, uh, uh, enemy air support, but uh, this was a sacrifice made uh, to not make the M10 too heavy, because if it would be too heavy, then it could not be uh, uh, moving in super fast and get out super fast again. Uh, the uh, the tactic was to uh, uh, to uh, hopefully work together with several tank destroyers on one target. And that's actually quite realistically portrayed in game, because that's uh, how you can use those in uh, in game as well. Um, the M10 has a nickname, uh, the Wolverine, and uh, whereas all other nicknames are pretty uh, easily uh, tracked down, the Wolverine is not a. Um, it's not clear where the Wolverine got its name from. So uh, maybe it's just uh, invented later, um, no one is really sure, so uh, let's just say that the, um, uh, the Wolverine is uh, an invention of somebody with a lot of uh, fantasy and uh, the M10 was a pretty numerous tank destroyer, uh, they were built uh, throughout the second half of uh, the uh, war and um, the production reached uh, over 6,000 of them. Um, the production uh, actually ceased uh, because uh, uh, newer uh, versions were coming to the battlefields so 
uh, in 1944 they started to produce uh, a newer versions of the tank destroyer and uh, that's uh, the next vehicle that we're going to Ready. talk about that's this one the M36 Jackson tank destroyer also open topped uh, also uh, Sherman chassis uh, it was uh, a ver it was actually a variant of the M10 but it had a, a bigger gun so it could penetrate uh, more armor of the Germans and um, in between the M10 and the M36 there was the Hellcat of course the M18 that we already talked about um, that was uh, even faster than both the M10 and the uh, M36 but um, the gun of the M36 was by far the strongest one. Um, they uh, wanted to build uh, a lot of these uh, to counter the, uh, the especially the Panthers and uh, they reached a production number of about 2300 or uh, produced during the war. Um, the the Jackson is also uh, uh, named after a Civil War general I guess um, I didn't find a lot of them uh, on this nickname, but I assume that uh, this is also named after a Civil War uh, general, since um, it sounds like a name which would be in uh, the Civil War, and uh, it would also mean a logical uh, continuation of uh, naming uh, these tanks. Um, Okay, so uh, these tank destroyers uh, were meant to only fight armor and not infantry because infantry would of course be able to lob grenades inside the uh, open-topped turret and uh, that would mean the end of the crew. So, this brings us to our last Central vehicle orders. which is the only American heavy tank. This is the M26 Pershing heavy tank. It has the same gun as the um, as the Jackson, um, and the uh, the Pershing was actually designed uh, to uh, to provide the United States Army with a uh, counter for the German heavy tanks. Uh, the Pershing was uh, named uh, after another general. And uh, while uh, most uh, names in uh, the United States Army were derived from the Civil War, the this one is uh, derived from the World War I because it was the uh, commander, uh, the overall commander of all American troops in World War I that were in Europe and the American Expeditionary Force. Um, so. The M26 Pershing is uh, the only heavy tank uh, in uh, the arsenal of the Americans. Uh, they built uh, about 2,000 of those, but uh, only a few of these actually saw combat in the Second World War. Most of them saw combat in uh, the Korean War, and um, it was actually intended to replace the Sherman but because it uh, took a, a more time than they had uh, hoped for uh, the war was over before that uh, could actually take place. It fought in the Battle of Remagen and uh, it uh, was also uh, fighting uh, heavy tanks in, uh, in several uh, confrontations. Most famous of those are at Elsdorf and at Cologne. At Elsdorf a Pershing was taken out by a Tiger, uh, a Tiger 1. Uh, it fired three times at the, um, at the, the, per at the Pershing, uh, killing part of the crew and uh, setting it on fire. And uh, while the Tiger then thought, okay, I should get away right now, the, um, uh, and uh, he was uh, backing up, uh, but uh, because there was a lot of rubble, the Tiger could not get away, so the crew of the Tiger abandoned uh, their tank. This particular M26 was uh, called Fireball by its crew, 
and um, it could be uh, damaged by the Tiger One because uh, there was a fire behind it so the Tiger crew could easily see the outline of the Pershing tank. Uh, in Cologne there is a famous uh, tank duel which is uh, famous because it was filmed and uh, that was uh, next to the Cologne Cathedral there was a Panther tank uh, laying in ambush uh, infantry and uh, Sherman uh, were uh, just uh, uh, were uh, running into this Panther the Panther um, uh, fired at the Sherman taking it out and then the uh, the M26 which was in a parallel street was called to the scene and it took out the Panther setting it on fire so uh, well like I said it also uh, took part in the Battle of Remagen where uh, um, where four M26s were uh, laying down uh, suppressive fire so the infantry could take the bridge before the Germans were able to blow it um, so the M26 is, uh, is a uh, pretty famous tank, uh, which is uh, weird because uh, when you look at the, the, the numbers, this was one of the rarest uh, that you could ever see in action. Uh, doesn't uh, compare to the Sherman, uh, uh, especially uh, when you think back to the numbers that we're talking about. Um, like uh, 50,000 Shermans versus uh, a little bit more than 2,000 uh, Pershings uh, that uh, says a lot about uh, how often these were used and the fact that I can dish up some famous battles of the Pershing means that those battles were rare and uh, when those stories are rare they uh, get more legendary status uh, instead of uh, what happens with Shermans Germans also had legendary battles, of course, but uh, sometimes they are portrayed pretty uh, weirdly, like in uh, Fury, the movie, that Sherman there is uh, like taking uh, shots from AT guns like it's nothing, and uh, yeah, that's just totally uh, exaggerated, and um, that means that uh, the Sherman uh, uh, Sherman in in that movie is uh, is a bit. Mm, yeah, a bit overrated uh, in that way. Um, okay, well, uh, this uh, concludes uh, this the video about the vehicles of the United States Forces. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, post them in the comments. If you uh, heard or saw something which is weird, uh, then just uh, please uh, post that in the comments too. And, uh, well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this again uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day